Okay, so now we will discuss some of the applications of uh, thermochemistry. One of the basic applications of thermochemistry is to find out the dissociation energy of a molecule. Now, what, what's, what is the dissociation energy? It's a very simple concept. Say you have a molecule, okay? Now, you want to, you want to break the bonds that are there in the molecule. Say you have a hydrogen molecule in which you have an H atom and an H atom, and there's a bond between the two. Now, the, when the bond actually formed, it had released some amount of energy to form the bond, okay? Now, you will have to spend some energy to break that bond, that is, that exists between the two hydrogen atoms. Now, the energy that is required that you will provide, that you have to expend to break that bond is called the dissociation energy for that chemical bond, okay? So it is very simple. It's the energy needed per mole, like per mole of, uh, the, uh, of, the, of the molecule, to break a chemical bond in a molecule is basically uh, the, the, the dissociation energy, right? So you have a hydrogen atom, you break this bond, the amount of energy needed to break that bond is basically the dissociation energy. Um, we quantify that using this formula in which you, so we have written that the, the, the D is the dissociation energy is basically the delta H of that reaction in the standard state. So the delta H of that reaction, so there must have been some kind of enthalpy of that reaction, the delta R H. So the, the enthalpy of that reaction will basically be the dissociation energy. Now, how will you calculate that? It's very simple. So the delta H of R is basically the summation of the heat of formation of the products, in this case, which are the atoms, and you subtract that, uh, from that you subtract the summation of the heat of formation of the reactants, which is the molecule, okay? In this case, the, you sum the delta H of formation of each, in each of these atoms, in this case, two hydrogen atoms, and you just subtract that with the delta H of formation of the hydrogen molecule, and that will give you the dissociation energy. Now, in this case, can you guess what will be the second term in here? So what will be the summation of the delta H of formation of the hydrogen molecule? It will be zero, right? Why? Because hydrogen, as we discussed earlier, that hydrogen element, the, the elemental reference state of hydrogen element is the hydrogen gas. So in this case, this whole thing becomes zero, and if you want to find out the dissociation energy uh, for the hydrogen molecule, you just have to sum the heat of formation of these two individual hydrogen, hydrogen atoms, and, and you'll have the dissociation energy. Okay, a similar concept with the dissociation energy is the atomization energy. Now, what is an atomization energy? Very similar concept, but not exactly same. Now, in this case, too, you are trying to break a molecule into its atoms. But in this case, you are not just trying to break a chemical bond, like a singular chemical bond. You are, to try, you are trying to break all the chemical bonds that are there in a molecule, and you are changing from a molecule to its uh, constituting elements. Like, you have to break all the bonds and you have to get the final product as just the, uh, just the atoms, okay? But you say, okay, in here, too, that you are, you are getting uh, two atoms, like, so how is this dissociation energy different uh, from an atomization energy? And in this case, also you are getting atoms, and in this atomization energy case, when you break, you're also getting atoms. Okay, so in, in a case of a diatomic molecule, there is no difference between a dissociation energy and an uh, uh, and atomization energy, because in this case, you ha you j when you just break one chemical bond, you are getting the atoms. But this is not the case for all the molecules that are there in the universe. There can be other molecules which, are, which have more bonds, right, in which you have to go for multiple bond breakages to actually get to the atoms, like in this case. So this is a polyatomic molecule, right? You have like multiple atoms. How many atoms are there? There are four atoms, right? Now, you have four atoms, so you have to break multiple bonds to actually get to, to separate out A and the three Bs, uh, the type of atoms in here, okay? So, when you break all these three bonds, then you get an A and three Bs, and that energy will be the atomization energy, okay? Which will not be the dissociation energies. Now, one important thing to keep in mind is that the, what seems here is that this bond, 
is similar to these two. So intuitively, we, we, we think that whenever you have to break this bond or this bond or this bond, subsequently, you will have to spend the same amount of energy. That is what like intuitively makes sense. But think hard here, think harder. Like when you break this bond, say you, this is the first bond that you broke, okay? So when you broke this bond, this molecule had changed from what being AB3 to AB2 with some kind of other electronic changes, possible electronic changes in this, in this structure. So this, the bond strength between A and B in this and A and B in this is, does not remain same. So you might be, uh, you might require even more energy to break this bond than you have spent to break the first bond, okay? So therefore, like when, when, when you have multiple bonds, it does not guarantee that the dissociation energy of one will be equal to the dissociation of the others and then you can just, uh, like just do a mathematics that, okay, whatever the, the dissociation energy of this, the atomization energy will be this times three. No, it's not, it's not the case. Why? Because the whole structure, when you break one bond, has changed. Now, since the structure has changed, the, ener like the energetics, the bond strengths have changed. So you might require some other energy to break this bond. And therefore, you cannot just simplify like that, okay? For a diatomic molecule and the, and the atomization energy, as I just said before, that the, both of these will be same because all you need to do to get, it, get from the molecule to the individual atoms is just break one bond. So these are the two uh, things, atomization energy and the, uh, and the dissociation energy. Now moving forward to one of the concepts of ionization energy or ionization potential that you might have read uh, when you were studying uh, periodic table, periodic properties. Now when you define ionization potential, you might have defined it in, in, a, in a way like this, that the ionization potential is the amount of energy required, again, endothermic, it's energy you have to spend. So the amount of energy required to remove an electron from the outermost shell of a gaseous, isolated gaseous atom. So that amount of energy that you will require to remove one of the valence electrons from the outermost shell of an isolated gaseous atom is basically ionization potential. It's not just making any kind of cation, it's not. It's, it's a special case in which you, you're not just making any cation. So you are taking an isolated, an individual atom, which is in, in the gaseous state, you're taking it away from everything else so that no other kinds of forces are acting. And in that special case, you are trying to remove one valence electron from the outermost shell. So that amount of energy that will be required is basically ionization potential. And that is basically calculated at zero Kelvin. It's a hypothetical concept. We'll study in second law why uh, zero Kelvin or the absolute zero is uh, not possible uh, physically. And it's an abstract concept. And so ionization potential two is calculated at zero Kelvin, that being an abstract concept in itself, okay? Now, this thing is the ionization potential. It's an endothermic, uh, endothermic uh, reaction. It needs energy. This is the heat of formation. So the, 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 and and this, this thing is just going from a solid to the gas. So this is not ionization potential, okay? Just keep in mind that this is not ionization potential. This is just making a cation. So what the best you can say is this is the enthalpy of making a cation, but not ionization enthalpy. Similar concept for the electron affinity, right? Electron affinity is something like this. So you have an A minus, you have an anion in its gaseous state, and you want to remove that electron from the gaseous state, right? From the A minus gaseous, you want to remove that electron to make an A. So there, the amount of energy required to do this will correspond to the electron affinity, okay? Now, something like this is an example. So you have a fluoride ion, and you're, you're moving from a fluoride ion to a fluoride gas like fluoride gas anion to a fluoride atom in the gaseous state, right? So what, what do you think will happen? So you'll have to spend some energy, right? Because F minus it is in a, in, a, in a stable state. So you're trying to remove that electron from that. So you will have to spend some energy. So this tube is being, uh, this reaction too is 
uh, and uh, endothermic process. Now, this is different from this, okay? In this case, you have a perfectly, so you have like uh, uh, the fluoride the F2 gas in here, like F2 gas, like molecules, and in here, if you're trying to add an electron, you're getting F minus. So this is making an anion, which is different than the electron affinity, okay? It looks like a similar concept, but there's a, like a slight difference. Uh, uh, there's a slight difference when we calculate these two. So this brings us uh, to the end of the f uh, uh, first law of thermodynamics and the related concepts. Uh, that, that, we, that we discussed in the realm of the first law of thermodynamics. After this, we will move on uh, to, the, the, to some of these concepts like the, the, heat, uh, the, the heat engines and the Carnot cycle and the refrigeration and things like that. So those will be uh, applications of the first law too, but that will be a segue into the second law of thermodynamics uh, where we define entropy and uh, the concept of uh, the Q reversible by T, which is basically the entropy. We'll define the second law of thermodynamics, and we'll also combine the first law of thermodynamics and the second law of thermodynamics to get the, the fundamental laws of thermodynamics. So we'll, we'll see those things uh, in the subsequent lectures.